This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Till midnight. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. I understand you are being flooded and we're on fire. So we need to <laughs> yeah. That's my stupid human tricks there that I can do. What yeah, you could have done SpongeBob. Oh really? The SpongeBob talk like that? You probably should yeah, you should have. See, it's very similar to that. Uh, I, I mentioned this the other day to a friend of mine uh, who would understand it, uh, uh, Shecky. Uh, I used to listen to radio a lot when I grew up, right? There was no TV. Yeah, folks, there was no TV. Did you hear that? Okay. There was no TV when I was growing up. There was radio. And on some show, and I can't remember who it was. It might have been Fever McGee and Molly, but I can't remember what it was. Uh, there was a guy named Mr. Ripple. I would have talk like this. But I didn't realize, <laughs> I didn't realize he was doing it with his fingers. Okay, I like this. I thought he was doing it with his mouth. So I taught myself to talk through my uvula, which is that little thing, you know, that mice in cartoons use with cats yeah. when they're swallowed. They use them as a punching bag. Right. <laughs> Um, that's how I describe the uvula. It's the human punching bag. And I, uh, I started talking to make that uvula go back and forth. Okay. So, um, I can do it without my fingers going back and forth. Most everybody else, when they try and do that kind of like underwater voice, uh, use their fingers. So. Yeah. You should have done cartoon voices. You could have made a fortune. I wanted to, but I just never, you know, you got to be, for some reason, you got to be in the right place at the right time to start doing that sort of thing. And I wasn't in the right place at the right time. So, yeah. Well, we know some people that were, uh, oh. Tom Kenny. Tom uh, Kenny, Cal, uh, Carlos Alice Carlos Rock. Alice Rocky, yeah. Yeah. Uh, people who were, were comedians, but they don't need to be anymore. I mean... What? I would imagine Kenny's worth millions. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he's the he's voice of Sponge doing... he's the voice of SpongeBob folks. And he told me it was supposed to last three years and now it's been on for twenty or something. It's been on for twenty. He's probably gotten continual raises on it. Uh he's gotten his pension from after him, or SAG or whoever is his union. Uh he's got a whole bunch of things going. So he's he's set for life. Yeah, you know, he's a good guy, so I feel like good Oh, for yeah, him. yeah. No, I, I only am happy for him, okay? And, and he, was really, he was really good at those voices, too. He's amazing. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that was his thing. I don't know how he fell into it, to be honest with you. He just fell into it. And I don't either. He's such a strong comic. And he, he told me he didn't miss doing stand-up at all, so... I hear that a lot from people who do stand-up. You know, I mean, I think that you have to be pretty dedicated to stand-up to enjoy it. And I think a lot of people just do it because, well, they're funny and that's a profession for them. And, oh, hey, I don't have to do it anymore? Fine. I don't want, I don't want to have to stay up late at night to do my profession. You know? Well, I think that's one reason Steve Martin said he got out because he said this Stay at that level. You have to work so hard. Well, I think what he said was is that he he said you have forty five minutes, okay, and then you have another forty five minutes, maybe if you're lucky, mm -hmm. and if you're really good, you can come up with another forty five minutes. Was that a pretty decent uh, assessment of the business? 
Oh, that's exactly what he said. He said because the newer comics try to write a new hour every year, and Martin said the greatest comics have two, maybe three hours of material. And that was it. it. And he felt that when he had gotten to that much material, it was no more. So he didn't want to continue doing stand-up because he knew it would only suck. So he qu- he quit on top. Uh, you got to commend him for that. And uh, yeah, I don't think has anyone ever burst out bigger as a stand-up than he did. That I mean, that was like a Beatle mania when he hit. Yeah, big. I for, as for that kind of popularity, no. I mean, I would say that you have some comedians who are very popular. Um, what's his name? The black comedian. Um, Chappelle. Chappelle. Uh, and uh, Seinfeld. You know, uh, they both of them can draw huge audiences, but it's not that kind of manic thing. That yeah, that, that was like a rock thing. Yeah. Well, M- Martin, it had to be. I would imagine one of the reasons he quit is it got too easy. You know. When we've talked about this before, that when you as a comic get up in front of an audience and you start performing, it's really a war between you and them. You know, you, oh, but yeah, that definitely a battle. <laughs> you got to prove yourself. You got to prove like you're in a fight, and it, not, not, you don't have to prove yourself like once in a lifetime. You've got to prove yourself twice a night. Right. And you got to go out there to a completely strange group of people. Go out there again to another strange group of people, and you then got to sell yourself to them. Now they're on your side; they want to laugh. They just paid like forty bucks to get in to laugh, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, you know they want to laugh, but nevertheless, they've got their arms folded too. Like, okay, come on, make me laugh. Yeah, you know, and that's the hardest part. And I think that he just felt that it was too easy for him at that point. If he just went, well, excuse me, they would all <laughs> laugh. Now, there's nothing funny about, well, excuse me. But uh, to this audience who knew him from that catchphrase, it was gold. You know? Yeah. And he'd been around for, I think he hit big, uh, he hit big, uh, uh, like a year or two after Watergate, and they said the country was just ready to be silly at that point. So I think the timing was really good. The timing was good, uh, and uh, he 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 basically what he had done with his career is he was a writer. You know, he wrote for the Smothers Brothers, wrote for yeah. the Smothers Brothers, and so on. And uh, he, he he occasionally would appear on screen in some routine or whatever because they would call on the writers to you know be in a sketch. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, you know, I mean, he really did a, he, he he worked on that, and then I don't know when the transition went to comedy. All of a sudden, one day, he was a comedian. He was a stand-up. He was the first live comic I ever saw for $5 in August of 76. Uh-huh. I saw him at the boarding house. Really? He, I, he, had a, he had a cult following then. I remember that, and if, and then, like, less than a year later, that's when he was huge. Now, he, uh, the boarding house, that was a comedy club in San Francisco. That I don't think, Street. I don't think it was even around by the time I started doing radio there, you know. Yeah, I think it was gone by, uh, well, I, that was 76 when I saw him. It might have been gone by, by 1980, 81. Really? That, that, uh, yeah, then that's about the time that I got there. And, right. Yeah. But, but but it's a shame it had to close down because I mean they were on the cusp of having this whole comedy thing going on in San Francisco. I mean the comedy. Yeah, they thing, clo- they closed at exactly the wrong time. Exactly the wrong time. Prior to Alex Bennett. Yeah. You know. I mean, I came to town, and for some reason, I became the promoter of comedians. Uh, I mean, it was a lucky thing on my part. It was an accident. I never, you know, I, I never ever said, here's what I'm going to do with my show. I just let it happen. And what happened was somebody said to me, hey, I got this friend. He, he knew you. He was. A, he didn't know you, but he knew of you in New York, and he'd really like to be on your show. And I said, what's his name? And he said, Bobby Slayton. Wow. 
<laughs> so I said, okay, have him come down some morning. So he came down, and we did this thing where he, I talked to him, and he talked to me. And then I, in those days, I had to play some records, so I played some records, and then we got back to talking again, and it worked really well. I, I'm wondering if it was Slayton or whether it was Jeremy Kramer that I had on first, and he turned me on to Slayton. Okay. That could have been. I think I had, somebody said, do you want to have this comedian on? Yeah. They, uh, see, this is how old I'm getting. I can't remember these exact things and what order they took place in. But I think there was a salesman or somebody at the station who said to me, I know this comic, his name is, Le yeah, it's Jeremy Kramer. And would you like to have him on? I said, ah, oh, what the hell, you know? I I'll try anything. And L Larry came on, uh, Jeremy came on, and it was really good, you know? So I said, do you have any other comedians you know? And he says, yeah, Bobby Slayton. And then Bobby Slayton came on. That was how it happened. Okay. And then uh, then I said to Slayton, you know anybody? And he said, oh, there's this guy working pretty good. His name is Dr. Gonzo. And I started having Gonzo on the show. And before you knew it, there was this whole cast of characters, you know, the Pearls, the, you know, the Kravitzes, uh, Bubbles Browns. What's a Bubble Brown? Yeah. Uh, bubbles. I never did. I never did the Camel Station. The first time I did your show was January '83. It uh, it had to it be. It, it had to be at the quake. That was the quake. Because I, I have a photograph with you at the quake. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. I have you. I think you were there when Robin was there. The morning Robin was there. And you were, no, I no. wasn't there. But I remember when he. I remember. I've seen pictures of that where the place was just mobbed. Pearl. I, think I was on with. Steve Pearl. Pearl was in that picture, though. Kramer, okay. br Kramer brought Robin by. Uh, but anyway, this whole thing just kind of developed like that. And before I knew it, any comedian who came on the show and was playing somewhere then sold out. Because what you got to do was you came on the show, you proved you were funny to the audience, and the audience went, I got to go see this guy. You know. Yeah, and then you started doing. You did. Do you remember your first live show you did with comics? Oh, jeez. I think we didn't do that at the Quake. We did that at uh, Live One Hundred and Five, uh, and I think the first one was the Punchline, um, if I remember correctly. Uh, and uh, or maybe it was even a supper with Schwartzman. No, I think the the morning shows came first. The Punchline shows. And then we started doing a, a supper with Schwartzman every Christmas from the Fairmont Hotel. Those were fun. And the Venetian Room. Yeah. I love that because my father worked the Venetian Room with Ernie Hector's Orchestra. It was such a classy place. Too. Yeah, with Ernie Hector's Orchestra. And so here I was finally years later working the uh, the Venetian Room in the hotel scene. Uh, the, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Was it? It was the mural room in the St. Francis Hotel. Yeah, it was. My father played the uh, Venetian room in the uh, in the in the in the Fairmont Hotel. God, I'm out of it today. Uh, <laughs> do I sound out of it? No. The, just on that one sentence. Yes, uh, it was. It was the Venetian room at the Fairmont, and and so I I worked uh, there, and uh, we did that on uh, on Christmas at Christmas time. They were big shows. We had a full orchestra and everything. And one comedian. Those after were the another. best, yeah. And musical performances and all kinds of. It was a great show. It do you, was. Yeah. Do you remember the show where we almost lost part of our audience? Uh, let's see. Trying to remember. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? No. There was a plane crash. There was a uh, a plane coming up from L.A. Oh, that's that's a PSA. The, P uh, PSA. The, that was December seventh, eighty seven. Well, there was, it was a huge crash, and it killed everybody on board. Yeah, we flew up. We flew up advertisers from L.A. and they were on the plane just before it. Wow. <laughs> Nothing, you know, we really would not make much 
headway with uh, the advertising community if you killed an entire group of he- uh, yeah. advertisers. You know, you'd be considered the jinx station. Instead, we were kind of considered the the non jinx station because these people didn't die. Yes, that was a disgruntled employee got on the PSA plane and uh, went up to the cabin and shot the pilot. You're right. You're right. I forgot the, the what went on behind it. I just remembered the crash. Yeah. I remember there was a sad story. There was a flight attendant. She was, she was like 19 or 20. It was her first first flight, and she was on that plane. No oh boy. How do you remember this stuff? I just you're just amazing. I used to like I used to remember airplane crashes pretty well. So that was. Uh, yeah, that what should have been? Uh, yeah, I think it was December seventh, eighty seven. What's the happened. last sentence in every transcript of plane crashes from the black? <laughs> Sound box? of impact. <laughs> Sound of impact. How? No, I never got that. How do you hear the sound of impact? I I wonder what it sounds like. I don't well, you only get half the sound of impact because then the whole plane is the, all the electricity has gone out of it, and the black boxes cease to work. Right? They don't keep recording. Yeah. In fact, you had this book of black box uh, transcripts. Yeah. And the last... We read, them, we read them on the air one day. It was like an acting class. <laughs> yeah, and in the end of every one of them was Sound of Impact. <laughs> well, I wonder what that sounds like. I just like the one where the guy, they're lost. This is a... It wasn't a big plane, but they were over Texas and somewhere, and the one of the co-pilots says there's a... There's a mountain around here at 4,500 feet, and the pilot says, the captain says, what's our altitude? He says, 45, hun, and the sound of impact. <laughs> I mean, I, I shouldn't laugh. No. Yeah, but the people died, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh boy! So what? What, what about got, plane crash? I gotta find that book again. I've actually got some. Uh, I'll forward it. I actually have some audio of uh, some of the crashes I can send you. Oh, okay. Do that. Uh, if you know how to send it to me through the. I can think. I can forward. Someone sent them to me, so I can forward it to you. Oh, okay. All right. So anyway, they, it really was. Uh, you know, you really loved plane crashes. That was your. What is it about plane crashes? Why not? Oh, that was my. That was, I was so afraid I was all going to die, and I, I became obsessed with plane crashes. So. Yeah. We, every know, time I every time I went to a gig, I was absolutely convinced I was going to die on a plane. I, I got I still got on, but I was absolutely convinced I was. It's horrible. I hated it. Now I don't I don't care anymore. I'll get in a plane. Well, what what uh, among co- the comics, the most common topic for comics are airplanes. I mean, everybody talks about every comedian has a bit in their. Uh, do you have yeah. one in your? Do you have one in your uh, in your act? Uh, no, I don't. But they all have something they, about airplanes. They were, when I started, everyone had a bit about the, uh, yeah, flying. And the reason they did was because they all flew. Mm-hmm. And so they all had a different take on what it was like to go flying and the horribleness of the flying and how terrible it was, you know. And uh, funny thing about the airplanes, they take a trip and, you know. It, <laughs> Even though the. Going back then, flying looks like a paradise compared to flying now with the TSA and all that crap you got to go through. Oh, then you uh, you didn't say, "Hey, we have to get there early because TSA may be taking forever," right? You just right. you just walked on the plane. That was it. You you ran for the plane. You didn't have to show an ID to buy a ticket. That's right. You just got on the plane and you sat there, and there was a very nice, amiable, as we called them, uh, they now call them flight attendants. They were stewardesses. They were stewardesses then. And it was always a stewardess. You never had men. If there was one, you went hot. Yeah, right. And, uh, and they, they, you know, they used to fire them if they gained too much weight. Yeah, they did. They had a thing like you. They they had to watch their weight very carefully. Yeah, and I think part of the reason they they watched their weight on this was because uh, uh, 
there was a tendency for the planes to get too overbooked. And if you had fat stewardesses, <laughs> you could only fit so much weight on the plane before it had trouble taking off. So, But anyway, they used to make a big deal out of that. And, of course, the waitresses, uh, the, waitresses the stewardesses, finally went nuts and said, we're not going to put up with this anymore. This is sexist. And, and it was. And it was, but it was really nice eye candy for us while we were in flight. Yeah. And they treated you very nice. Would you like a pillow? You know, now Yeah, you get, you're just treated like cattle now. It's horrible. Yeah. Going to the slaughterhouse. But, you, uh, by the way, it's meal time. Here you go. Here's the steak, and here's the, you know. You're going, and this isn't even first class. In first class, you got, like, filet mignon, you know. Yeah. And um, cooked to your taste. How would you like it? Rare. Okay, we'll bring it to you rare. I mean, I don't know how they did that, but they did that. And they cooked it all in, in the air. But I, I uh, uh, those were the days for flying. Those were the days when, when you flew, many people wore a suit or a very fine, nice dress. Yeah, now it looks like a flying, you know, like a Greyhound bus with wings. So. Yeah, yeah. And some guy with his pig in the seat next to him. Yeah. You know? <laughs> In the uh, before they deregulated airline travel, you could get if you went to the airport, you had a a ticket on TWA, and you missed that flight, you could just go over to America and, and just uh, take the flight to the same city here. And right, you, it was just an even exchange. Right. Now you can barely get on the plane. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's insane. It's not, it's not fun. It's not fun, and that's why I don't look forward to flying in a plane anymore. I used to look forward to it. Oh, we're going to fly tomorrow. That's going to be great. You know, I got on a plane, mm -hmm. and they serve me, and they get me a pillow, and, you know. And that was just coach. You didn't even think about business class. Didn't matter, you yeah. know. Coach, I always wanted to fly first class in the 747s because they had that little spiral staircase remember they had two levels oh yeah i uh, uh when i was flying to europe i had a woman i knew at twa and she said anytime you're flying anywhere just get a hold of me buy a coach ticket and i'll upgrade you to first class so i went over to europe with my girlfriend at the time and i called her and sure enough we got first class over and back wow okay and it was on a 747 and we got the seat. In those days, you went up the stairs, and there was a bar up there. By the time I took the 747, they had done away with that. You just went up the stairs, and there were seats there. And that was a great place to sit. You were right behind the pilot. You know, you could, every time they opened the door, you'd see the pilot in there. And it was just great. It was terrific. Uh, those planes were huge. They just huge. Uh. The pilot was 60 feet above the ground. The what? The 60 feet above the ground. Really? Yeah. How do you know the, How do you know these things? I used to I used to love flying. <laughs> you used to love but flying. Those now, 747s they were huge. Yeah. They're no more anymore, are there? They're a pretty they haven't made them for years. They're going uh, out of uh there's still a few flying, but they're uh, yeah, they're pretty they're old. Four engines. They suck a lot of fuel. And they and more than that, they're they're old. You know, they started. Uh, they broke into service in January 1970. Isn't it amazing that there's some planes out there flying? that are like 25, 30 years old. Yeah. You know, uh, and and they're still flying. You know, they made them right. Somehow we can't get them to stay up in the air with the new ones for more than five minutes. I know. <laughs> I don't want to get on the new 737. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that, that, but, uh, God, I, I just never knew I could sit here and talk about airplanes with you. And yet, that's another one of your little... Well, hard to believe that, uh, well, jet travel's been with us since, uh, I think, 1950. The British had the first one, the de Havilland Comet. Which turned out to be a disastrous plane, but uh, so that's been. Uh, what, Listen to him, years folks. Listen travel. to him. He can tell you the name of the first plane that jet travel started with. And and seventy years ago, it, the one thing that hasn't changed: the planes are no faster than they were then. Another little trivial fact, folks, that yeah. you only get here. <laughs> 
Hey, listen. We're except re- for the except for the SST, the Concord, which is no longer with us. But yeah, did you ever fly that? Look, you know, I don't know. I just got on the goddamn plane. That's the one that went uh, twice the speed of sound. So. Oh no 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 no! I never got on that. I oh, you're talking about the one that used to go to London. Yeah, like in four hours. In four hours, yeah. If it went any faster, you get there before you took off. <laughs> really? But incredible. That was also good, I think, for people who didn't want to suffer jet lag. You know? Yeah, it was great. It was fast enough that you pretty much landed about an hour after you took off. So it, the jet lag wasn't a big problem. Hey, listen. We had one one in the 70s that flew around. uh, They went around the world on New Year's Eve, so you could celebrate New Year's in every time zone of the world. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Larry. We'll talk to you next week. Larry Bubbles Brown. Your pilot, Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah. Hello, everybody. How are you? Mm, Okay. I'm doing okay myself. I've been sleeping all day. I don't know what it is, man. I just, I just, I put on the TV set and it it knocks me out. It's like become a sleeping pill for me. It's ridiculous. Let me just get a few things here set up so that I can see them. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, uh, listen, I, uh, I got to talk to you about something. Uh, you know, the last couple of nights, or the last week or so, maybe two weeks, the listenership on the video has been really low. Uh, and, you know, we, we do this thing. We started this thing out as an audio show, and we added the video. Uh, when it turned out that I was taking people by Skype, and I was seeing them anyway... So I may as well uh, broadcast their pictures as well. And I did. And uh, the reason it became a video show was simply for that reason. It was meant to be an audio podcast. Uh, and was for the longest time. I think it was only like Friday nights we used to do the audio, or the video version. But then along comes Zoom and along comes a lot of other things and it got more and more sophisticated and I started doing this thing on video and it was available on YouTube. And uh, I started doing it that way. And we used to have a pretty decent sized audience, not huge, not by, you know, the standards of some of the other people on, 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 the, on the internet, but nevertheless, it was, it was pretty good. Well, in recent uh, weeks and uh, the last couple of months, it's been it's been nose diving on people watching the video, and I was feeling very depressed about that that nobody was listening to the show. And then I went over and I hadn't checked in the longest time my audio only uh, downloads on the show, and uh, I uh, looked it up and. Lo and behold, I was amazed at what I saw. I saw numbers for people listening to the audio at a rather large number. For instance, uh, on uh, the third, I got a number that was two times as large as the people watching the video. Uh, and um, it, was, it was significant, too. Mm. I, got my, I got a pimple on my tongue, so if I sound funny when I'm talking tonight... Please excuse me. Anyway, I um, uh, so I I, I I I it was significant, and I said to myself, "Well, maybe there's no sense in really promoting the video version of the show. Uh, people are really listening to the audio-only version. They get that through YouTube. They get that through our our uh, GabNet site. Those are the versions that are audio-only." Also, uh, the, um, a lot of the shows that are on uh, uh, the various other services like Spotify and so on are the audio-only shows as well and not the video. Uh, and I started thinking, well, you know, maybe I should just stop really pushing and, and promoting the video version of this, uh, that I can post it to 
you know, I, I, I'll do it in video because it's obvious that it's the easiest way to do it. It's there. If I suddenly didn't do video uh, and did audio only, I'd still be looking at these people. So they may, we may as well have a video version of it. So the video version is a very natural thing, but the audio version gets vastly more listeners than I'm getting with the video, at least uh, these days. So I decided that I post this thing in video on Facebook and it isn't worth my time to do it. It's not even worth the trouble of pushing a few buttons that makes it happen. Um, this show is goes out on and is right now going out on YouTube and when it's over with, YouTube automatically makes it into a file you can watch at any time. Uh, the other file that I make for it is a secondary file that is just the recording only and, uh, of the show and not the one, not the actual, uh, it's, it's the actual show we did, but it's just not like the one that, that, uh, that uh, YouTube puts up. You get know what I'm saying? So I do two versions of it, and then that one goes as a... Uh, boy, I got an itchy nose tonight. Excuse me, folks. I don't I hate it when I do this. Um, uh, but my nose gets itchy, and then I, I have to scratch it, and then it, uh, I don't want to make it look like I'm picking at it, but I, there's like a hair I'd like to be able to pull out of it right now, but I can't do that. Anyway, where was I? So anyway, I mean, the point I'm trying to make is, and I'm still a little loopy from the uh, shot I got, not terribly, but still loopy from it. Uh, so I don't know what to do. So what I'm gonna do probably is not post it anymore to Facebook. See, no reason to do that. Makes no sense to do it. Uh, a very minor amount of audience listens to it there. And again, it's not worth the amount of clicks that I have to do in order to put it up there. Uh, I'll still put up the, uh, the, the obviously the vi version that goes out on YouTube uh, as the recorded show, the show that was done here, uh, I will keep. And then I edit that later on in the day in order to chop out all those commercials at the very beginning. And I'll also do that other version for the time being. Uh, and I will put that up on the on demand and also on the gabnet.net page. But basically, more people are listening to this uh, as audio only and not as video. And uh, I see no reason to continue it on Facebook as an example. And I may stop the secondary version that I do and uh, uh, just uh, uh, not post that to the... Uh, uh, to the uh, Gabnet and to the Gabnet site, I will post the others. Although I don't know what I'm going to do yet with that. But the fact is, I'm going to put a minor uh, consideration where the video is concerned. And if you ever want to just listen to it, you can use you you can use to, uh, uh, iTunes. Uh, you can go to Spotify. Uh, you can go to uh, Pandora. Uh, you can go to anyone there on the. Uh, Man, I'm out of it tonight. I shouldn't even be doing these shows. Um, the uh, All the different ways you can listen to this show, and some of our other shows as well, are listed at the top of the page on, uh, on gabnet.net. Okay? All right. That being the case, I will go to our people who are waiting, and there aren't that many here. Also, the callers have been limited in the last week or so and I'm getting tired of that too so uh, I it says oh three people have entered the room one says owner many times that's somebody who is a regular on the show and uh, yeah 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 here he is it's uh, it's uh, our old friend uh, what's his name owner <laughs> Jason Jason, why don't you just change that from owner for Christ's sake? And my wife just came in here and tried. She set it up and changed it because it was set at your iBook or iPad, whatever my freaking computer name. Watch she it. changed it and it just it defaults back. I don't know. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Hold on a second. I'm going to do something here. Uh, I'm going to rename Jason. 
But see, Alex, every time you were talking about not having good numbers, I always told you, like, you know, do you look at your audio? Because that's all I ever do. I don't, you know, I can't call in because it's too late for me. Yeah. But, you know, I download your stuff every day. I use that auto Alex and that's sent to my computer every day. And I'd listen well, auto to Auto Alex. I don't, I don't have auto Alex, but uh, <laughs> I'm just being a smart ass. Oh, it's actually, you, you do kind of get it sent to your computer when you want it by using iTunes. Yeah. Uh, it's always there. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, no, you're right. I think more people listen. Well, obviously, you're right, because I was looking at the, and I hadn't looked at the numbers in a long time, and I looked at it, and I went, oh, we had like, you know, I think it was the last, uh, the, set, the third or something, we had something like, I don't know, 350 people who listened to it in audio, and only about 200 that watched it in video, you know? Uh, so I mean, what does that say? That there was five hundred. And and I you know I th I think some of those I know where they're coming from, and so I can then post the video there. But I'm not going to do it on Facebook anymore. That's a waste of my time. I find mm -hmm. that twenty five people watch it on Facebook. So why mm -hmm. should I post it there? You know. So so to all you people at Facebook. There we go. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you watch it on Facebook? Is that what happens? Really? Once in a while. Yeah. Jeff, well, you know, you can always go over to the, the uh, gabnet.net and yeah. you can watch it there and you can watch it on, uh, you can watch it on iTunes and you can watch it. You, there are a lot of other ways to watch it, okay, because okay. it is it is posted to those other places. So. Alex, Alex, we're only seeing you on YouTube. Oh, really? Oh, I forgot. Yeah. See, I was... Now night, you want to do audio, you're all, people are gonna, only going to hear us. Yeah, <laughs> I... I, uh, I you know, I that happens. And lately, I've just been screwing up terribly. That's another reason I'm hmm. thinking of maybe wow. cutting, Jeff, Jason, and Josh cutting the show down to one day a week because I'm I just I've lost it. I've completely <clears throat> lost it. You know, uh, tonight I did I consciously was doing everything right, and then of course I screw up on that. I get to talking, and then I go to the things, and I don't even look. Thank you so much, Brian, for telling. Me. Yes. The, the old man is really fucking up a lot lately. <laughs> hmm. Alex, do you remember uh, when instead of an hour and a half, we used to have two hour show? Mm -hmm. Did you ever look to see how that affected the number of people? No, not really. It, it didn't really affect it much. Yeah. Uh, and it, it made my life a lot easier, you know. But I, I don't know. I just find that I'm screwing up too much in the technical end of this. And uh, I'm just starting to get to the point where I'm beginning to wonder if I just am losing it too much to keep doing this, you know. Marjorie says keep doing it, though. It's the only thing that's keeping you alive. So Stop when it's not fun. Huh? Stop when it's not fun. Oh, well, that was years ago. <laughs> yeah, but you have, we, there's no listeners on the, the morning show, and you put that one on. What do you mean no listeners on the morning show? When we talk, there's like seven people watching, and I'm usually one of them. What do you mean the morning show? <laughs> on the, the Monday show. Oh, the Monday show. Oh, well, no, watching at any given time, yeah. But that show, by the end of the week, has an incredible amount of people. See, I wish you'd put that on uh, iTunes also. Uh, I, I don't put it up on iTunes. I really don't. Um, only because, uh, why don't I put it on iTunes? Uh, I just don't. You know, I should. I, I, I have an I audio. that's a good show. I have an audio version I make of that show. And it is, you can hear it on the 24-7. But I, you're right, I don't put it up there. However... I, if you do go to gabnet.net, I do up on the you know the big uh, the blob at the very top of the right hand side of the page. The video there is it's it's posted there every Monday Monday so yeah. And I can't talk today because I got a pimple on the side of my tongue. You ever get those? Uh -huh, I can't. Mm -hmm. uh, Isn't that herpes? No, it's not herpes. <laughs> It's worse. <laughs> it's it's worse. It's cancer. Hi, Patrick. How are you? I'm super duper. He's 
You know, whenever you say that, you say, oh, I'm just super duper. You just don't sound it. You you never <laughs> sound like, wow, I'm super duper. I'm super duper. Oh. I got no complaints. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you got no complaints. Yeah, how's your week been going? <clears throat> um, Good. Uh, went to get my oil change today. Oh, I see. And so there look- was not a mask in sight not required not even mentioned it was like fucking heaven it was great Uh it was was the best experience i've had in almost two years so but why do you think it was that way have they done away with mass mandates in your state well we got a a governor that loves masks he wants to put 12 of them on (laughs) i just think uh (laughs) He can't mandate it. Um, you only get a one one time deal a year in our state to mandate something like that. But no, the business the the, the dealership doesn't require it. So uh, there wasn't one person in working there mm-hmm. or visiting. It was great. I loved it. It was fucking wonderful did he require but i was breathing the fucking air like nobody business. yeah but you know? the, the, my, my question is this did he does he in that little company of his require his people to be vaccinated or to be tested and if not you maybe should feel a little maybe put out you know that you might get some, get it in spite of the fact you know there is sec, you know there are people who do do get it well, still but, Even though they've had the vaccination. Right. I mean, the glorious Dr. Fauci told us we're all cured if we get the vaccine. No, he hasn't, so, he hasn't said that. He said we should, still should uh, uh, observe safety protocols. Is what well, I know said. it changes It changes week to week. I mean, it changes show to show. Yeah, but, him. you know, you can't use that as your argument because, mm-hmm. that you know, of course it changes from week to week. It's an That's ever, how science it, works. It's how science works, yeah. It's an ever-evolving situation, you know. Uh, I'm comfortable as I am. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just thinking that I I think about the guy who's running a business, and he's kind of putting his uh, his customers in danger. They you know? don't have to come there. Well, they maybe they don't. They know. don't have to do business there. Maybe they don't. I mean, if I felt if I felt put out, I wouldn't have to. Well, I mean, there. when they call and when you called and made an appointment to get your car lubed or whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, did they tell you, sure, come on down, but let's warn you, nobody's required to wear masks here. No, I, I asked them, are you requiring masks? And they said, no. I said, good. Okay, and but they didn't offer right. it. They didn't offer it to you. They didn't offer and, the information. And the thing is, nobody's forcing you not to wear a mask. I mean, if somebody wanted to wear 15 of them and a, and a fucking plastic bag and, you know, a condom and everything else, they can do that. Yeah. yeah. Were, the employees, were the employees wearing masks? No. What that? Were the employees wearing masks? No, nobody was. Really? There, there wasn't one mask that I saw. Wow. And that was in the uh, service area as well as where... Uh, the waiting area is or out in the showroom not a mask in sight it was great so by the way john redshaw said my uh, zoom show isn't up on youtube uh, uh yes it is it's the it monday is. show yeah it's up yeah it's up right now i just looked to see so yeah so i just had i recently friended it was like my older brother's friend on facebook mm-hmm. and uh you know, I, my older brother was friends with one of my friend's older brothers, and you know, so they were friends. And then me and his sister were friends. He just posted something today on on uh, Facebook saying, "I wish Joe Biden hated the Taliban as much as he hates the unvaccinated." And I'm thinking, I just saw a post yesterday from your sister saying how she just got out of the hospital from COVID. Yeah. I was like, I just don't. It, it's like it's like playing a game of Russian roulette watching the guy next to you blow his head off and you reload the gun and you keep on playing. 
<laughs> I just I don't get it. Yeah, you, you know, and I feel to Patrick to a point because Patrick, you've had the vaccine, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. and I'm at the point too. It's like you know what? If you dumb fuckers don't want to get the vaccine and don't want to wear a mask, well, go fuck yourself then, I, because yeah, you're pretty. By the hard. way, let me say fuck you to all of you. I've had three vaccines. Yeah, you got the booster. I got the booster. I'm jealous. I want the booster. So, <laughs> well, go down and tell them you you're you've got some kind of condition. I tried to get the you booster. Three. But I couldn't get it yet. I like three. I'm gonna get needled up. I want to get double vaxxed, I think, soon, too. I don't care. It, it, uh, it, well, it's kind of like, you know, what, what they say he used to uh, go out with a woman, and I brought two bags. I put them both over her head in case the first one broke. Oh, one yeah. over hers and one over mine in case hers falls off. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I, the joke was something like that, yeah. But well, anyway, the thing is that, that um, it's, uh, you know, I just think that I mean, I, I know where Patrick's coming from. I mean, he's vaccinated, and he just goes, okay, I've done my part. Now you do your part, and if somebody's going to get infected and wind up in the hospital, it's going to be somebody who isn't vaccinated who goes to this place to get their car lubed, right? That's your basic feeling on it, and that you leave it up to the individual to decide. But the thing is that we've been trying to wipe out this disease in this country. And we are not wiping it out because not everybody is getting vaccinated. You know, if just everybody would get back, I'll tell you, if anybody is watching who's on the edge, and that's like one of 10 people here, uh, but if you're watching and you're thinking about whether you should get it or not, I, I mentioned to Marjorie yesterday after we got the shot, I said, did you feel anything? She said, no, you know. I mean, afterwards, our arm hurt a little bit at later on in the day, and we didn't kind of, we felt puny for about a day, but that was it, you know? But mm -hmm. so far as getting a needle jabbed in your arm, you wouldn't even know it went in. Uh, that was what my mom said. She said, I went home, I took that Band-Aid off, and I had to look, because I didn't believe I even got a shot. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's a very small needle, and it, mm -hmm. uh, it just, it... Uh, they don't even have to push it. It just goes right in, just very yeah, easy. I'll say my, my arm was, you know, sore for two days after yeah, both yeah, of my, them. Yeah, mine's still sore. But it, yeah. was, it was hurting bad, but mine was weird. It was after the first one. The very next day, I was knocked on my ass for like the first half of the day. Really? Mm -hmm. I wasn't knocked out the first time. The second time, I was a little second bit, one, and Marjorie was... really knocked out. This time... It knocked me on my ass. People saw me last night. You know, I had uh, had trouble sleeping the night before, and, and my legs were aching like I had the flu. Oh, but, you know, it's not a small price to pay for the, for the immunity you get from it. And I understand now that I've had the third shot, the immunity even goes higher. Yeah, you're in a good percentile now. Are you know, on that? That it's, it's, it, it's considered pretty, pretty, pretty decent. And plus, it. Uh, you know the the, well, the the variant is not a not a big problem here. Uh, uh, Josh said he uh, the last time you finally got yours, right, Josh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, did you? Oh, it was a while. Huh? <laughs> so I knew that was a while, so I was doing a little hand clap. Yeah. But, well, I mean, he did it when it was convenient, when somebody was around to give it to him, right? What did they do? Give it to you at work, or was it a pharmacy down the street, or something like that? Um, there's a pharmacy nearby, and uh, um, I had the second round today. But I mean, I stopped in too, just so that uh, you know. I told you guys the other night that I had to go to a doctor for that. One deal I've got going on, and I mostly just didn't want people to ask me over and over again if I've been vaccinated. And every time I say no, I have to fucking listen to their shit for playing that. <laughs> so peer pressure worked. <laughs> peer pressure worked. They would fucking shut up. <laughs> well, the thing is that uh, that uh, uh, when I first got my first shot, I had to wait in line for two hours. And there was a line all the way around the block, and it was only places that the city had uh, vaccination sites and so mm. on. Now you can just fall out of bed yeah. and be somewhere that's going to be able to put a needle in your arm. Most pharmacies are, have the capability of doing it, 
and mm. uh, that's where we went yesterday. We said the hell with it. You know, we were there, there. I don't think there are any. I don't know of any more city uh, things that are out there. It's just ev anywhere you want to go, and it doesn't cost you a penny. Yep. All insurances cover it, uh, and uh, there's no reason why people shouldn't get. It. Let's wipe this thing out. Because you know. the government's telling me I have to get it, so I'm not going to get it, even though I'm a patriot. Yeah. Oh, yeah they're, they're trying to sue. I heard, is it true that the RNC is suing Joe Biden? They're trying to put a lawsuit on him for the mandate for federal. Yeah, election. and, and uh, I don't and, think it's the RNC. Isn't that just a lot of Republican governors? A lot of Republican like governors. But, so far. Uh, uh, and I heard a, they had a, they said they, they ran this past a group of, just lawyers period didn't know didn't matter where their political bent lay and asked him if such a suit would work and they said no but I ask you know, he has the right I can... he has the right to do things which uh, in an emergency uh take care of a public who's in danger you know what i would tell Rand paul and these guys who, who were even thinking that weren't they behind warp speed so what was the whole idea of being behind warp speed? We get the vaccine, it's FDA approved, and now they want to sue the guy. Well, because he wants to pass a federal mandate warp speed. if you work in a federal job. I mean, well, they were behind what, it. What's the answer, Tony? You know the answer to that. They just, it's basically, they just want to go against anything he says, really. Well, they, they, it was Trump, you know, yeah. he, he, when he did warp speed, oh, we're all for that. We're oh, all go, for it. Go, now go, it's go. out. It's FDA approved. Let's sue them now because they got to make it. We, oh, we no, can't. Not, not, but Biden's forcing us to take it. Yeah, for, only for federal jobs. I mean, it's almost like they, they're so stupid. Well, it's, it's so obvious. Look, I agree. It's, it's a voluntary thing. Nobody's going to make you stick your arm there and have somebody jab it if they, you don't want them to. Mm -hmm. But you got to think about the greater good of you and your neighbor. And what, 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 what's the downside? What's the upside? And the downside is more people get sick. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. uh, 250,000 children under the age of like exactly. 14 have COVID. Wow. And yeah. of those, how many they say died? I don't know something the exact like, numbers. Like 150 or something like that. But children are dying of it now. And before, remember, Trump said, hey, kids, it doesn't matter. They're immune to this. No, they're not. Hey, can I, can I ask you a question too, Alex? With the whole, you know what I was thinking of when, it, when he was trying to, you know, he's trying to pass the mandate for federal jobs. When you were younger, right? Say people like me. I remember when I went for a supermarket job years ago. They used to, we never had a drug test. Now, for any job, you have to pretty much have a drug test. Now, how come we're not up in arms about that? Yeah, you know, uh, that is something that I questioned a long time ago. I think, like, what I, the I, I, I think they should be more uh, yelling and I'd screaming be more pissed about, that. about drug tests because what your drugs are in your body, forget about the stuff you might be taking in illegally, but yeah. the, the, they don't only test for, you know, cocaine and marijuana and heroin. Anything. They also test for any drug that's in your body, and if they give you a test, they can find out every drug that's in your body, and the only person who should know about most of those drugs is your doctor. Yeah, I mean, see, I would be, that's what I'm saying, I would be against that. I'd be more pissed about that, taking drug tests. I'm against, than... I'm against I've always been against drug tests, and not because I'm pro-drug, which I am, mm -hmm. uh, but I just think that it's, uh, there's something very wrong with that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but that isn't helping the public safety. That isn't because there's a danger to the public involved in you doing drugs. There is a danger to the public in you not having a vaccine. Yes, Jason. So that's where I've loved with my arguments, like with, uh, sorry to blanket people, but Republicans throughout my life, you know, anytime I sit there and I disagree with them, they tell me I'm not an American, I'm anti-American, and if you don't like it, leave, and blah, blah, blah. And now I like to use the same talking points to come back at them at and say, your country, America, is asking you to do something to help, and now you're saying no. Don't ever fucking tell me you're a patriot ever again. You know, there was a time in this country, and, and you might want to comment on this, Patrick, when your country asked you to do things and everybody got together and did them 
Mm-hmm. World War II, perfect example. Uh, don't uh, you know? Don't uh, you know? T- turn all your scrap metal in and so on, so we can make airplanes. And people got together and had all kinds of drives and things like that because it was the patriotic thing to do. It was being an American. Patriot and, bonds. Hey, huh? Hey, what about what about John F. Kennedy? Ask not what you can do, but what you can do for your country. They can't even put a fucking mask on. Yeah, well, that, but that was, yeah, that was minor. <laughs> right? Don't even get the needle. Can you put a mask on? We but can't that was that. minor they compared didn't. to what we did in World War II. I mean, we, we the co- country rallied and to be patriotic. It, it, and that's what I would love. Freedom, to, hate to say. Mm-hmm. Too much freedom. I would freedom, love to try to come out with some type of advertisement campaign saying, you know, we were asked to do this. You know, we were asked to die for our country. We were asked to put put on food rations. We were asked to do this. We're just asking you to get a shot. Yeah, they didn't. You know, I would even say just wear the mask. In the beginning, they it's like before the shot. They do a lot of them don't even want to wear masks. But I even have guys who are former military, and they sit there and talk about, oh yeah, I don't even know what the shots they were giving me. You know, they just line you up and boom, boom, both sides, and make you out there sit doing push-ups. You know, we we didn't even ask. You know, we were just we were doing our duty, blah blah blah. But now your country's asking you and not forcing you, and now you're saying no, I'm not going to. do Yeah, it. when you were in the military, if they wanted to give you a shot, mm-hmm. you bought it. Goddamn well, took the shot. You know. Uh, and then when did 20 push-ups afterwards? And then when did 20 push-ups afterwards? Exactly. So. But you know what's funny? It's like you said, Alex, too, the other day. These people will take, when you see the drug commercials for Viagra and all these other drugs, if you take this, it could have a side effect. So they'll pop all these other pills and not worry about it. But holy shit, don't take the vaccine. You know. Yeah, well, you know. I got to get that hard on for an hour, but God forbid I take the vaccine and, you know, save my life. Right. We were talking I'll about take the horse dewormer first. Brian, Brian, <laughs> no, give me no, give me the, ste- yeah, the okay. football players. All right. All right. I don't want to take the vaccine, but I'll shoot steroids yeah. in my brain like a lot of Azedo, and I'll take that <laughs> needle to go on the field. But I didn't take an vaccine, Colby. You know, you don't do that, but you shoot yourself up with, with every drug to get on that field. Okay, calm down. But don't give me the vaccine. Calm, calm down. Calm, calm, calm down. down. Calm down. Uh, but Brian and I were talking about this last night. He has a kid. He has several kids. Uh, and they all go to school. And your kid can't go to school unless they have certain flu shots, right? Certain measles shots and things yeah, like that. Yeah, uh, even when they're in COVID, uh, when they're a virtual home, they, uh, Stephanie have, was missing one of her Tdap or whatever that one is. And uh, so she had to actually have, she had to have that done before she can go back. But it was even virtual they're reminding us to make sure you know before she comes back so 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 yeah. so really asking parents to get their kids vaccinated against a disease that's very prominent right now is not a terrible thing for them to do right yeah you know I mean, well, what's changed since the 40s you know since since the war you know and, and and yeah they were stopping everything they even stopped car manufacturer for what one or two years yeah. it's like I think a lot of greeds come in where, you know, they, nobody would stop what they're doing to, to help the country anymore. Everyone's too greedy. Yeah. It, this this whole here. pandemic has brought out the two different parts. It's not really Republican or Democrat. It's no. the people who have a me or a we attitude. Yeah. 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 Well, I think, you know, I understand where Patrick's coming from because Patrick is a conservative and he says, you, you pr- tell me if I'm wrong, Patrick, but you pretty well feel that it's up to the individuals to d- want to do this and to do this on their own and for people not to tell them what to do, right? It, it, yeah, and I, I think that President Biden overstepped by doing a government mandate, I think, Private businesses well, have every right to mandate within their business, whether it's two people there, a hundred, a thousand, whatever. Um, that part of, um, you know, um, that, that's up to them. But I think a government mandate is a little bit, a little bit much. Okay, let me ask you this. What if I work for a company? And the company said, okay, well, I, I'm not going to mandate vaccinations, all right? And I work for that company, and I go, well, then I'm not coming to work because I don't want to be put in danger of getting mm-hmm. it. Does he have the right to fire me? 
<laughs> you have a right not to work there. No, does he have the right to fire me if I say I will not come into work until it's a safe mm -hmm. work, working well, environment? Well, I would assume at some point, yeah. And where and, and where does if, oh, where does OSHA come into this? In well, safety in the is OSHA for safety in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Well, if if, if if that's what I'm saying, with if if it's not a government mandate, OSHA has nothing to do with it. Uh, I think OSHA is supposed to be in charge of making sure that workplaces safety are safe. Workplace. Yeah. Yeah, but it's still your choice. Well, Nobody's forcing you to work there. No, but, no, but yeah, well, but economics, be economics are making, make, forcing you to work there. You don't want to lose a job. Yeah. Well, you can get vaccinated. Well, OSHA well, requires I mean, me to wear a hard hat, and I don't want to wear it. I mean, just but, because but I get, it, by the way, just it's because. part of your job, you have to do it. And if it's not, I mean. Okay, but. It's it, rocket science. I it's, wouldn't say that the vaccination is 100%, you know. They say that one out of every 11 people who wind up in the hospital with COVID are unvaccinated. So a certain amount of the vaccinated population is getting sick. And they're getting sick because they came into contact with other people who hadn't been vaccinated. Okay, so so then I'm going to say to myself, well, look, I don't want to, I don't want to go to that job because I'm going to come down with this. Then I'm yeah. going to bring this home and spread it to my kids and to my wife and to my family. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And and uh, I refuse to go to work there until that workplace is safe. You know. Uh, yes, Jason. So me and my boss just had this kind of conversation today. He was actually starting to become more pro vaccine because he's looking at the boosters and the science behind it. But then I think all the other, you know, right wingers started getting to him and now he's all anti-vax again. But I had to bring up to him. It's like, where do your rights stop? You know, we're in America. You're an American. Well, you're right. You have stops all these where, where, do they stop? where my nose they begins. They stop when they start to infringe on somebody else's rights, right? Well, they said yeah, the, said, the old saying was, your right stop where my nose begins. Correct. You and so, and I asked him, I said, so why can't you go out and get freaking plastered and drunk and get in your car? Isn't that your right? No, 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 of course not. Because, well, you know, I'm, you might kill somebody else. Oh, but wait a minute. <laughs> well, minute. you know, the, the same thing with this. You know, if you're not wearing your mask, you're not getting vaccinated, you put other people in danger. But I think so the why? question is, you know, I mean, what, what, why didn't, aren't these same people fighting against mandatory drug tests in, at work? Because it's not political. I mean, I don't know if it's your job you have to have a mandatory drug test. I think any union job, they have to be wait, involved. Wait, hold on, Tony. I don't know. Uh, do you have that at your job? Oh, yeah. Jason? Is mandatory yeah. drug test? Yeah. Well, then what, what, what's wrong with mandatory testing? What's wrong with mandatory? mandatory it, it, there's plenty of jobs out there that require you to get vaccines anyway. Any type of nursing job, you work in a hospital, you're required to get a flu shot every year. Mm. Yeah. That, that's been normal for years. So why don't they just, this is just, this is another flu shot. Okay, yes, it's new. Okay, I'm sorry you're scared. Well, your kids. Because that's all it is, is that these yeah. people are scared to get it. And, but millions of people have already gotten it. Get over it, suck it up, go out there and get your shot. Brian, your kids have to be inoculated against the flu every year, right? In order to go to school? Uh, no, not flu. Not, no, flu. not flu. Not flu. They have the other, the other tests, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but they got, they got, vaccine right when they could you know what do you think about the legalities of this uh supreme court justice uh uh josh about what is it about just about biden's ability to be able to dictate that companies over 100 have to have everyone vaccinated and that uh, he can do it for the military he can do it for any federal jobs that he, that's right. for sure he has the right to do but what about yeah. him just generally mandating this? He can. I think that I think you're going to have some trouble with that. I mean, I think it's I think it's certainly a stretch. I mean, I don't think that it necessarily meets OSHA's you know mission in a lot of ways for the particular job related hazards that they were set up to enforce and police and you know a lot of the other regulations that osha 
and forces, et cetera, I think people should have to remember such as, you know, OSHA makes me wear a fall protection harness when I'm above four feet and I don't like that. I shouldn't have to do that, et cetera, is a legitimate thing. But you should also remember that those regulations were not mandated by a single person. Those regulations were written by Congress that, you know, only Congress has the power to change OSA's regulations and uh, and mission. So the president, as the president, is in charge of the federal government, mm -hmm. and he can mandate enforcement, uh, you know, policies and priorities and things like that to federal agencies, but he doesn't always have the power to change their what their policy is, you know, so OSHA is governed by, you know, Congress and, and a change to OSHA's mission or regulations in almost all cases will take a, an act of Congress. And, you know, we haven't had one. So that's why I say that it's, it's a stretch and they're going to have some trouble with it. I, I think that what we have in here is a lot of people that are okay with it because they agree with the policy. Okay. But I don't, I don't approach things personally in that way it, i don't care if i agree with the policy or disagree mm -hmm. with the policy i care about whether or not the person trying to do it actually has the power to do it because if i look the other way because i disagree or, or i'm sorry because i agree who's to say that next week or next month or next year or 10 years from now there will be a policy that gets by the same way that i don't agree with mm -hmm. you know so i don't i don't look at it that way I mean, I understand, you know, some people might like that. And I saw Jason laughing a minute ago when I said something about, you know, that's OSHA's mission. But uh, but that's what I'm saying is, but OSHA's, reg those regulations were not, you know, you don't have to wear a fall protection harness above four feet because President Carter decided so and he wrote that down. You have to do that because the House of Representatives and the United States Senate and their subcommittees that govern OSHA wrote a regulation and a law, and then they voted on it. And then it went to a president and it was signed into law, just like any other law. Hmm. And changes to those are required to be done through that process. And I think that we're operating a little bit outside of that process. I mean, you know, OSHA's mission is to regulate from workplace hazards. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, this is a national concern, not necessarily a workplace hazard. I understand that there could be sick people in the workplace, but it's not organically grown from the workplace. I'm not saying it's not going to have a positive effect or it's not, I mean, all that is beside the point. And if the courts look at it, that's, that's their job too. Their job isn't to look at it as if it will, you know, keep well, you from getting this. Your, their job is to look at it is the person who said that, were they allowed to say that? Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, that's the way I would look at it. I, I, I just, it's very iffy. Well, I think, I, I, think, I, would I, say. I think we have, what we have going on right now is I would imagine the first time in history we've had to face this kind of problem with this kind of magnitude, okay, and this amount of lethality. Uh, and uh, I, I think we just, we don't know how to handle it. Can I interrupt yeah. you right there, Alex? Because yeah. you might have been through this before. How did they treat polio? Yeah. Polio, yeah, was, yeah. Poli, polio was was different. Yes, Jeff, you want to answer that one? Wait, turn on your microphone, Jeff. When I was third grade, mm -hmm. teachers said, everybody in the class, we're going downstairs. Well, four, I don't know. Just do whatever the teacher tells you to do. You get down there and guess what? Everybody's on a line, polio, mm -hmm. first injection. Mm -hmm. Come back, I don't know, a month later, get it shot again. Mm -hmm. Of course, eventually they didn't even have to have to make an injection. Yeah. They could have you uh, eat something. Yeah, yeah there, was, uh, there was the yeah. sugar cube. Right. There, there but was, it was the same at that effects. point, yeah. it was just they wanted to prevent polio. 
Well, I think they the, great, did. the greatest fear but that did it, Congress that, passed that law, or did the president make them do it? I, I, nobody made anybody do it. Everybody was rushing to get it because yeah. parents were watching mm-hmm. kids in their neighborhoods come down with a debilitating disease from which they couldn't walk. They had to have braces on. They saw kids in iron lungs, and they were afraid that for their child. I mean, every every parent in America was mortified <clears throat> by this disease. And that's just what goes back to what I was saying before. Like, yeah. I, I just keep on thinking it's just a lot of these people are going to have to see it too close and personal to them and then before they realize you know yeah maybe i need to get vaccinated but the, this guy his sister just got out of the freaking hospital and he's still yeah. preaching all his anti-vax stuff i just yeah I but what i'm saying it. is is that with with polio you didn't have the component where for instance how do you prevent polio prevent, well the answer well, the was answer, the answer, yeah, answer would you please would you please, t- would you please turn please your t- audio down there ray Okay, um, uh, the problem was with uh, uh, polio. Is, the difference with polio was you didn't have to, you couldn't wear a mask to prevent it. We didn't know what caused it, but it certainly wasn't person-to-person communication of this disease. Here we have a case where somebody can breathe on you and you've got it, you know. And to the level to which you're going to have it, and whether it's going to kill you or not, is a crapshoot. You don't know. At my age, I'd probably, or Jeff's age, we're probably goners if we get it, you know? Not that you got your third shot. Uh, the, well, now that I got my third shot, we don't know what the third shot yeah. will do. All I know is I have more protection than any of you, okay? But the, what is that? Uh, how, about, how about when you're a kid during the Spanish flu? Don't bring me a Spanish flu. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my mother would say. Well, we, we, we wore, listen, you will <laughs> look, be in Massachusetts, Have you seen pictures right? of people during mm-hmm. the Spanish flu? Yeah. They're all wearing masks. Mm-hmm. They're at yeah. baseball After games. After a while, yeah, they, they realize that. Yeah, yeah, but there was no there trouble was getting trouble people getting to wear masks wear during mask. that. that. Uh, Ray, you've Ray, got, you've got, got your audio up again. I think it's got to be you because you're only, okay. only the only new I, one. I don't hear anything here. Well, well do you have, uh, is the browser up? Or, I don't know. Hey, uh, 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 Jack, are you there? I'm right here, but my browser is yeah, not well, up. But I did hear you talking <clears throat> yeah. about uh, what we're going through right now. And uh, my dad had an older brother who died during the Spanish flu. Mm-hmm. And he was never, ever over that. Wait a minute. Now we have that uh, audience coming back again. I don't know. Anyway. Right. Or try to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, keep going, Jeff. Uh, uh, Jack. Well, anyway, I remember when I was 10, 11 years old, my dad telling me that he was, uh, you know, just a little kid when his older brother died in the 1918, 1919 Spanish flu. And and if you if you take a look, there are stories. Wait a about, hold, hold, hold on one second, Jack. Just to see if it's you or not, Ray. Just mute your mute yourself. He is muted. I have he been muted. muted the whole time. It's yeah, yeah. he's been muted. Yeah, uh, well, I have been muted. Well, hold on a second. Let me just do something here, and let's see if that stops it. Okay, go ahead, Jack. Continue. Well, anyway, like I said, I was about 11, 12 years old when he started telling me about his brother dying in the 1819 Spanish flu, and he was probably about five when his dad died. Rather, when his uh, older brother died. And, uh, you know, he, he never got over that loss. And then as I started reading about the Spanish flu, yes, there were mandatory wear mass orders issued because they figured out rather quickly that this was something they could do. And the interesting thing is the Spanish flu is, a, is really the wrong name for this thing. It yeah. started at a military base in Kansas. Yep. And it got called the Spanish flu because the U.S. government hid what was going on and the Spanish newspapers in Spain carried the story. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry, Ray, by the way, because you were the last guy to come on and all of a sudden the audio started doing No, it's that, fine. So. I understand. Yeah. I understand why you thought it was me. Um, I, I'm hearing it too. And I, 
And yeah. whether I mute it or not, I still hear it. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, the fact is, Jack, that uh, you're you're quite right. It started here on a, in Kansas, I think, on an air ba uh, uh, army base in Kansas. Army and, base in Kansas. And then when we sent people over there to fight that war over there, uh, they took it with them, and then it went it went crazy. Okay. Fort Riley, Kansas. If memory serves me right. Yeah, the difference, what I read is, here the only difference is the only difference is in, in what was happening then and what's happening now, is back then. If if that same flu existed right now, we might not be nobody might be dying of it, mainly because we just had didn't have the medicine to solve it back then. We didn't have the antibiotics. We didn't have all the all the things that we can do to people. We don't certainly don't have vaccines. Uh, it didn't have vaccines back then. But do you know how fast that Spanish flu died? Overnight, practically. Overnight. Like on a Monday they had it, and then on Tuesday nobody was getting it anymore. And nobody can figure out why it disappeared. I thought it took like three years to get no, rid of it. No, no. I mean, it was going for three, four yeah. years. And then all of a sudden, on a Monday it was here, and on a Wednesday it was gone. But we still have some diseases that uh, can kill a lot of people. And I suspect that the same jackasses that say, my body, my decision, would say it even then, say if we had um, the Black Death come back. Yeah, and sorry, right there I had to jump in, that my body, my decision, do they say the same thing about abortion? Of course not. No, no. <laughs> of course not. No, the same people in Texas who are making laws against abortion, uh, making it harder for women to get abortion, are the same people that are saying, uh, hey, my body, don't touch with it. You can't put a vaccine in me or require me to get a vaccine or to wear a mask. So, I mean, I, I don't know. Let's have a certain, you know, consistency in thinking. And then I'll go, I'll say you have your right to be, feel how you feel. But, you know, if I ask a person, about uh, about the getting a shot, and they say, no, absolutely not. I have a right not to take that shot. I have a right not to wear a mask. Okay, what do you think about abortion? Well, I'm against it. <laughs> sure, it's like and, and I'm against uh, providing college education. I'm against providing uh, assistance to uh, families that don't have uh, good economic uh, resources. You know, I think the basically, damnest basically, thing. Basically, why don't we start referring? Why don't we start referring to your Texas uh, legislature as the American Taliban? No, hey, I'm, hey, yeah, I'm all he for it. Like he hates people. I'm for. I, hey, one of the things that's being talked about in some women's groups that I'm aware of is uh, they're proposing that women have a labor walkout. Really. Yes, do what they do in Europe. Let's, you know, if you want to change something oh, I in America, you, meant, I thought you, meant you got to mess with the money. I thought you meant they weren't going to go into labor. No, <laughs> good, good line, though. good line, Alex. You know what I find just so ironic is like the, the Republicans, they, they care about the fetus so much. You know, while you're in the womb, they care about you. And, when you come and then out. when you're out of the womb, <laughs> you're on your own. <laughs> Well, they always they always talk about how, how they always talk about how pro life they are, yet let there be some seventeen year old kid in jail, and they want to execute him. Yeah. Well, well I've exactly. said this I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I'm pro life. Uh, where I'm concerned, the woman I know gets pregnant. I'd like her to have the baby. I, I would hate to see the baby get aborted she has the right to do anything she wants to but i would prefer she didn't that's where i'm pro-life but i'm not pro-life where somebody else is concerned that's their decision to make yeah that's you know? a good point yeah and, and all i'm saying is i'm not going to stop somebody from getting an abortion because they want it okay what i find is interesting is um when these uh taliban pro-lifers start talking they say well those children can be adopted let me tell you what happened with me and die nobody you. wanted to no. adopt the two of you <laughs> no 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 uh donna had, donna had had children now i've never had kids and when we got married 34 years ago 
we seriously talked about adopting someone because, you know, we had reached a point in life where we were financially secure. We could give a kid a better chance than her two kids when she had them back when she was 18 and 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And we, we felt like we ought to do something. We tried to adopt. I was 43 years old and was told I was too old to adopt. Really? Yeah. Now, this is something I don't normally talk about, but we told uh, the Dallas County agency that handles most of the state adoptions, we will take a kid that is older, you know, a black male child past six or seven years old has no chance of being adopted. So we said we'd take a kid that was older. We'd take a kid that had uh, disabilities or learning defects, and they still would not let us adopt. The way we wound up raising a kid was Donna's daughter and her husband, her first husband, broke up, and she had never wanted this kid in the first place. And she said, here, take this kid. Hold on a second. I just want to turn this down here for a second to try and stop it from slapping back. Yeah. Um, you know, we're kind of slowly running out of time here. Uh, but I mean, we, we talk about this every night and it's, it's never, we're never going to solve this problem in this country. We're going to have COVID is going to be with us for the next 20 years. If these people don't want to do their part to stop it, that's all there is to it. Now they can do anything they damn please. You're right, Patrick. They have the right to say, I don't want to, uh, I don't want a vaccination. But on the other hand, I think if they don't, we're going to be with this for a hell of a lot of, a lot of time. And it's only going to get worse because we're going to get more variants because we didn't stop it now. And those variants are going to come hot and heavy over the years to the point where I don't care if I have my 10th inoculation. It's not going to get a booster coming. every week. Yeah, yeah get a boost every week. Whatever, whatever oh, happens, is doing things for the good of, of, of mankind, you know, doing it for the good no, of it, the public. It's a matter of just doing your part. Well, whatever way, happened to that? Yeah, Char Charlie, you didn't have baseball tonight, or you did, but you got uh, off early. My last game ended early, so. Oh, okay. He, he, he's he's in mourning from the game last night still. <laughs> Baseball is your life. <laughs> Look at who's right, with football. us. Wait a minute. Look at who's, oh, yeah, football. Look at who's oh, with us. Dude, it's the, the, game last it's night. the poster child for the ramble. Adrian, Adrian, do you have your vaccination? Yes or no? Huh? Yes or no? Adrian, yes or no? I know. Yes, you know. <laughs> so when we go out, when we go into the store, what do you have to do? Because you don't have a vaccination. This I gotta is, practice this with her more. What do you do? Do you wear a mask? Do you wear a mask? Yes. Why? People are gross. They don't get coronavirus. So you don't get coronavirus. Good oh, job. I see. Very Bravo. good. Bravo. But we'll practice more mask. next time. Does she? Does she, does she <laughs> get that kid an agent? Does she? Get that kid an a girl. Agent. Does she have a really cool uh, mask? Uh, yeah, she's got a couple. She had one really cute one, Piggy with the ears and stuff, and I don't know where that one went, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, here's why it's so important for her to wear that mask. The grandchild that we raised, who is now 32 years old, has four kids of her own. As soon as, and she lives in Minnesota. Yeah. As, as soon as it started circulating in the suburb that she lives in, the whole family family had COVID-19. Mm -hmm. right. Well, anyway, you better get going because you've got a show to do. Oh, that's oh, that's right. And you I, know, and I've got are you going to pay me the same amount that you paid me uh, last week? Uh, the check's in the mail. Mm -hmm. When are you going to come on before so it's not as late? Yeah. Talk to my heffy. Talk to, you know, my Sinatra. This is the, this is his clan. Yeah, he, he can have this shift, and I'll go on at uh, 6 o'clock at night. Uh, I don't know. I don't be your lead in. Works for me. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, everybody. Thank you, Jack. We appreciate it. Say goodbye to you before you not get go go away. Uh, uh, Jeff, thank you. 
Jason. Yes, I have your name, Jason. <laughs> Jeez almighty. And uh, uh, thank you, Jason. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, um, uh, <laughs> uh, Josh, thank you for joining us tonight. I'm out of it right now. Uh, Brian, thank you. And oh, hey, Adrian. Adrian, good night, honey. Good night, hey. Daryl. Okay. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, is she playing with a with a keyboard of some sort there now? Yeah, uh, more okay. games than I know how to play. Okay, okay. And uh, Patrick, great seeing you again tonight. You really helped the uh, discussion a great deal. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Tony, thank you. Thank you, Charlie and Ray Renati. Thank you very much. Oh boy, I'm out of it. Uh, but I'll, I'll be with it starting next week again. Uh, give a big wave goodbye, will you? I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the citizen panel. Okay, and uh, uh, Jack is next. He's here with, the, uh, with a little program called The uh, Intersection. He'll be taking your calls on Skype. Uh, and using GabNet Live as the number you call. You just put in GabNet Live into your Skype. And if you don't have Skype, get that in there too so you can call Jack every night. I'm gone until uh, next Monday when we do the uh, Zoom show, uh, the show I call the pop-up. Uh, and uh, that's at 4 o'clock on Monday. And then we'll be back with the ramble again on Tuesday night, 10.30, Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And please uh, listen to what we were talking about. Get vaccinated, or if you don't, then wear a mask. Do your part, okay? Bye, everybody.